I had two different ways I could go this week on the show, and the first one was really positive, and the other one's really negative. The negative one is still kind of playing itself out, so for now, I'm going to remain positive. For now. I want to take the show to answer an anonymous poster on the DCUO forums, and probably answer a bunch of other people too. I've been very vocal about my dislike of the latest DLC for DC Universe Online. I don't like much of anything of Amazon Fury, and I've stated my opinions on their forums. One random fanboy attempted to shame me into silence by asking, Well, why do you even play the game if you dislike it so much? Well, first of all, the tactic of flaming me into silence doesn't work. Second, not everyone is a slobbering fanboy and loves everything that a company does. I mean, I have the right to not like something. Third, in spite of the part I dislike, there's a lot of the game that I do like. For example, most of the community. Most. Most. Stay positive. Stay positive. The DCUO community isn't really unlike most modern MMOs. I mean, most players keep to themselves, they just do their own thing, except in mechanics. Well, people are prone to randomly jump into a fight with you to help speed things along because they get rewarded for it too, but, you know, as gamers, we share one trait no matter what the game is, just to see it a lot more in DCUO. The best way I can describe it is through an event that happened last week. I, I wasn't recording it, but I'm using other footage from the same instance just to show you what it is. It's Thermoscura Divided, it's part of the latest DLC, and it's a very grindy four-player instance. With a really good pickup group, you might be able to do it in 90 minutes assuming that you can finish it at all. Most people rage quit right by the end. It's also important to know that the instances reset at 3 a.m. Central Standard Time. So, to kind of put everything in context of what happened, about 2 a.m. the random pug pops up as Thermos Gear Divided. Now, as I said, most pugs take an hour and a half, so this alert would finish after the reset. Meaning that the mini-bosses would be pre-reset, the main one probably post-reset, or simply put, it would mean that half the incident would reset on the new day, the big reward wouldn't, it just means that you're going to be grinding on it for a longer period of time, not the end of the world. The pug, however, was kind of surreal. Without saying a word, we just swapped into our roles and we just started plowing through the event. We weren't quite overpowering it, we were just being tenacious. We made the right decisions as a group, and when we got to the final boss fight, it had only been 47 minutes. It then took us less than 10 minutes to down both bosses in the final fight. We finished the instance at 2.58 a.m., two minutes before the reset. It's very possible that nobody else thought about the whole reset thing, but I don't think so. At end content, we all know when the server reset is, and you want to get stuff done before the server resets. And under this time pressure, there was no attitudes, there was no drama, there was no blame. It was just put your head down and drive. And when it works, it's amazing. You want to know one of the main reasons I play MMOs? It's stuff like that. This isn't the first time that something like this has happened. There was another time way back when a pug that I was in attempted the 8 player raid in 30 minutes just before the hard server reset at 6 a.m. We didn't make it, not even close, but we ran hard all the way until the game kicked us out at 6 a.m. And this is not specific to DCUO. This is not out of the ordinary for gamers. We had this attitude of, oh, there's 45 minutes to run an hour long instance? challenge accepted. It's standard operating procedure. There's actually one story of legend where a group ran an instance in City of Heroes as they were shutting down their servers forever, allegedly finishing it moments before NCSoft pulled the plug. I can't find video of this, but the fact that this story exists and it's believable says something about gamer culture. And for what? I mean, in the City of Heroes story, it's just pure bragging rights. You're not getting anything for it other than just the last run. But in a fairly stable MMO, there's no reason to race the clock. We could just wait until after the reset. I mean, that makes more sense. And in the grand scheme of things, the currency you earn is minimal. It means an extra day of grinding at worst, and yet, we still do things like this. And before we continue here, yes, I am aware of the people who rage quit instances, and I'm aware of the people that do it chronically, but the thing is that we all know that they're a minority a very vocal and visible minority, but a minority nonetheless. Most of us gamers will stick it out and we'll actually see it all the way through. We'll finish the mission. Why? To answer that, I need to get into one of the reasons we play games like this in the first place. It's a challenge. 
It's been my experience that gamers enjoy a challenge, especially when we're told something is impossible. Uh, case in point, the DC Love dev team talking about survival mode. It does have an end cap to it. I don't think in a theory. single player, a single group, will be able to get to that end cap. I don't think so. It's been about a month, and at least one group has actually done it. The lesson being that if you place a challenge before gamers with the promise that somehow it's completable, we will complete it. A lot of researchers are using this tenacity to their advantage. You've got games like Fold It, Planet Hunters, and Genes in Space that are using our love for a good challenge as a means to do good things. Gamers solved a problem in three weeks that researchers struggled for 13 years with. Challenge accepted and met. So is it just the challenge? Well, I suppose that's a part of it, but that's not all of it. Most of it is things like the moment. You know, that moment when everything just kind of clicks. Humans work best in small groups. They work even better when they all know each other, they trust each other, they know how each other react, and so on. As a group gets larger, people have this tendency to disengage because they believe that their individual efforts have no meaning in the larger picture. Bring that down to four or five people. Now there's an understanding that everyone is covering everyone else's ass. In MMOs, a lot of people seem to never have this realization. One person with a false sense of self-importance sees themselves as carrying the group rather than being as part of the team. Another person sees a player as the weak link and kicks them out to replace them with someone else more powerful. Again, it's that internet disconnect, the subconscious thought that people on the other side of the screen aren't real people, they're just intelligent NPCs. But once in a while, it happens. You get a group together that just seems to get it. My strength covers your weakness. We're in this together. I trust you know what you're doing so I can concentrate on what I'm doing. When it happens, everything you do is amplified, multiplied. It's not about my DPS or his DPS. It's about our victory. In MMO culture, it's rare to happen. Sure, if you're playing with your friends, it's more likely, but when you're playing in just a pickup group, that moment is very fleeting, and when it happens, it is amazing. Which actually brings me to one other point. I've been meaning to talk about this for a while now, but it's a hornet's nest I haven't really wanted to kick, but now I will. I want to make an argument that pugging is the hardest challenge in MMO gaming, and yes, I'm going to include top rating guilds doing end content in that assessment. Now before you start in with your responses, let me state my case. When you drop into a pickup group, you have no idea what you're getting into. You could have run the instance dozens of times before, but that doesn't mean your teammates have. In DCUO, there's also this wild card that you might not have a vital role filled. I have run alerts without healers so many times that it's become a skill in itself just to stay alive. You also instantly have to trust your team, and for a lot of gamers, this is almost impossible. I think this is a reason that people enter an instance with that attitude that they're going to be carrying the group. They just simply don't trust anyone else. This mistrust leads to yelling at teammates to motivate them, and then eventually just rage quitting or kicking players out. So the trust wildcard is always going to be an issue. And yeah, I can trust you to do your job, but unless you trust me to do mine, the whole thing falls apart. I mean, I'm a jaded bastard, and I even have enough faith in my teammates to trust that they know what they're doing, they're gonna go along with it, they're gonna do their job, I don't have to carry them, I don't have to tell them what to do, we can all just get on with this thing. And if I can have that much trust, anybody can have that much trust. That doesn't mean I'm not watching, I mean, I'm a jaded bastard for a reason, you know. Even if you throw the trust issues aside, a pug is still a lot harder than any top rating group run ever. Most of the time the players have the minimum gear to get into an event, and they're actually the first ones to get kicked by the way, which is ironic. I mean, kicking people out of an instance for not having overpowering gear, thus preventing them from getting the gear they need to overpower the instance. But I digress. What this means is that since they can't overpower an instance with gear score, they have to work for it. And it's not pretty, but they do get it done. That is the gamer tenacity at work. Because of this, there's a motivation to get through the event. And this kind of goes back to an earlier show. This is why the failure penalty is such a slap to the face insult. It turns a group from trying to win into a group trying not to lose. There's a difference. This is what makes it so rare when groups just work. Everything has to fall into place. Everyone has to know what to do, they have to trust each other, they have to check their egos at the door, put their heads down, and just drive forward. They have to admit that failure is an option, and they have to ignore minor stumbles, and mostly, they have to realize that they are not individually more important than the team. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's a thing of beauty. So let's bring it back to the beginning. One of the core reasons that I play MMOs is for that moment. 
You know, there's nothing in the world quite like realizing that there's nothing in the world that can stop you and your team from accomplishing a given goal. And until you experience something like that for yourself, it's almost impossible to describe. Uh, one thing I want to mention really quickly here, normally this would be where I'd put a gag or something, but um, yeah, I kind of had a medical thing today, so that's why the voiceover and that's why this is not its up to what I would consider par, so my apologies for that. Life is what happens while you're making other plans is what it comes down to. See you guys in a couple weeks.